Oh yeah, I definitely will at some point. Um, kind of hoping I can talk to girlfriend and making up a dark elf something or other so that gives me an excuse to make one. Yes, I'm talking to you. Get on it, woman. Oh really? Oh my, Tommy and I used to play uh, play EQ together all the time when he was growing up. It's too bad. It's a great bonding experience. Unless the little bastard steals all your kills. Did he? I didn't hear it yet. No spoilers. No, I'm kidding. You can spoil it. I hate watching speeches. Oh. Is that all? <laughs> I was going to say something. I was hoping you'd say something about the indictments. But I guess I doesn't want to let the cat out of the bag until they're actually served. Hey, he went to the Philippines. I wonder how that went with old uh, Duterte. That guy's a character. <laughs> like his way of dealing with troublemakers. Throw him out of a helicopter. <laughs> Can't you selling drugs in our country? We throw you out of a helicopter. <laughs> you see a drug dealer, you shoot him. <laughs> I promise you, nobody will get in trouble. Somebody who's determined to take his country back. <clears throat> I'm glad that uh, things went well with the Chinese, though. Um, they're currently holding a lot of our debt. And they can make things very problematic for us. So. I think he speaks their language, though. Not Chinese, but money. Twin Peaks. Anybody remember that show? The guy's, na the guy's name is uh, Firewalk with me. Oh, what's going on, Kajay? Wait for the camera. You're not waving. Wait for the camera. It's a rule. There we go. <laughs> This, uh, Jadilla, this is, um, Southern Karana. Southern Plains of Karana. <laughs> I'm going to start calling it that. I'm going down to Spock. But let's stay away from Sulu, okay? <laughs> Topical humor. Yeah. Well, sorry. I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, he's the latest in the long line of uh, Hollywood perverts <laughs> to get called out. Um, apparently, he um, performed something, some inappropriate behavior on somebody that was unconscious, and when he when he came to, his pants were down around his ankles, and George was just having the time of his life. It's like everybody all at once decided. Hey, <laughs> let's finally grow a pair and turn on those people that violated us so many times in the past. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, well, everybody always knew Hollywood was bad. I mean, casting couch jokes aren't something new. Um, just back then it was considered inappropriate, but not illegal. Now it's illegal. But it's too late to do anything about it now. But you can ensure that those people don't do it again uh, by taking them out of those positions where they can abuse their authority. No, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I just hope nobody messes it up, you know, by making false claims and, you know, just wanting to get in on the act because, you know, they exist. Those people exist. I want to be. I, I want to tell everybody I was molested too, but you never were. So. I vaguely recall somebody looking at me weird once. Does that count? 
no, no, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. No, I know, I know, but Hollywood's just notorious for it. Um, it's much more prevalent in the uh, in the industry, in the movie industry, entertainment industry, not just movies, but entertainment in general. It's much more prevalent. You want to be a star? It's going to cost you. Uh, that's kind of the thing. Cause it, preying on people's desire to be known, to be famous, to be to be somebody important, to be somebody people recognize. Sure, I can hand you that ticket. All you gotta do is do me a little favor, you know that kind of thing. And it's skeezy. That industry is more suited to it, and yeah, it's been going on for years. Well, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin has a, a whole string of um, inappropriate behavior. I know of at least. Why well, I, I don't know of them, but you know there there are at least two girls that were only 16 years old when he got them pregnant. Um, and he was messing with them long before that. So this isn't a new thing, not by any stretch. It'll cost you, Melvin. It'll cost you. <laughs> you all will be happy to know, though, that Michael Jackson never molested Macaulay Culkin. So, got confirmation of that. They just had a very odd friendship, that was all. From Macaulay's mouth. That came out completely wrong. Now, he was a, he was a odd individual, um, but you have to take it in context. Look at the life he had. Um, I think that was somebody who was just trying to have a childhood. He, just, he was just trying to have it as a 40-year-old man. Um, odd, yes. Eccentric, very much so. I, I, I don't think he's a... He's too skinny. Most kids could kick his ass. God, the guy weighed 98 pounds. I don't know that he was all that big a drug user either, Melvin, except for, you know, prescription drugs for various things. Um, he seemed to me to be a pretty straight-laced... Uh, sp straight edge kind of guy um, so, you know it takes one to know one kind of thing and he, he's not the type he's not the type to be a you know like a pot smoker or anything like that a heroin user um, I don't have anything against it I think some people could benefit from it um, I don't think it should be illegal but then again, I don't think heroin should be illegal either. I think in moderation, it's fine. Most people don't use it in moderation. Most people use it to excess, use it too often. Um, it's, it's like anything, though. Anything in moderation is fine. It's when you start using things to exit. Video games in moderation are fine. When you use it too much, it interferes with life. So uh, that's my opinion on weed. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. Um, I um, used to be a very heavy, heavy smoker, um, weed, and um, you hated running out. I'm not saying you get physically addicted to it, but the um, psychological addiction, you know, the need to be high, because you spend so much time high that when you stop being high, it's like being high. Uh, you don't know how to function not high. So you want to get high again, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, you get used to being high so often that you just can't function unless you're high. And I found that once I quit smoking, I was getting a hell of a lot more done. Um, it's, it's not a dig on weed or anything like that. It's just I was you know, spending more time smoking weed than I was doing anything. So I just, no, got to stop. Got to stop. Got to get shit done. So I did. I stopped. No, it's no major achievement, so you know, no accolades or anything like that. It's just like I decided I didn't want to smoke weed anymore. That's all there is to it. I don't, I don't have anything against it. I'm not opposed to it. I think it should be legal. I think people should have the right to make that choice. I don't think that choice should be... T yeah, yeah. But I, I feel the same way about any drug. Heroin, cocaine, anything. I, 
I think people should have the choice. On that same note, if you're going to make that choice, then you have to um, be willing to um, deal with it on your own when the bad times come. Um, you get hooked on heroin, that's on you. Nobody force that needle into your arm. Um, don't ask me to pay for your rehab. Accountability. Something that's very lacking in society these days. Accountability. You make a choice, you suffer the consequences of that choice. You do. Not me. You. I make a bad choice, I suffer the consequences of that choice. I've known a lot of cops over the years. When you own a game shop, you'd be surprised at how many law enforcement people come in as customers. Um, and they always got discounts. You know, all emergency personnel always got discounts in my store. And most of the ones I've known, uh, the, the vast majority of the ones I've known, um, have, have been just decent people who are just trying to make the, make the world a better place. Uh, the problem is people depend on cops to be in the role of crime prevent prevention, and that's not a cop's job. A cop's job is not to prevent crime. A, cro a cop's job is to enforce the law. Um, it's a different, completely different thing. There's nothing a cop can do to prevent a crime. Nothing. All they can do is act on a crime after it's been committed. Prior to that, they have no authority, they have no jurisdiction. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. They perform a service that benefits society as a whole. Um, it's just some of them take it too far. Some of them abuse it, uh, and it makes it bad. But you have that in any any profession. It does to an extent, uh, but all it does is it shifts the crime to another location. If you got a cop here, nobody's going to commit a crime here. They're just going to move over here to do it, kind of thing. Um, Oh, damn it, this guy. No, I'm just going to zone. I don't want to kill him. I don't want to take the faction hit. No one has ever not committed a crime because there's been a cop in the area. They've just postponed committing a crime. The drug, the drug deal will not go down at this particular point in time. They'll just wait until the cop leaves the area, kind of thing. Well, that's fine, and that, that, that's what you should do. Because, like I said, the police don't prevent crime, or prevent crime, they enforce the law. Um, the only ones who can prevent crime are the victims of crime, uh, the, the potential victims of crime. Of course I would, absolutely. I have, you know. It's, it's, um, but that, that's, that's a completely different situation. The cops aren't there to stop crime, though. That, that's the that's the problem. They're not there to stop crime. They're there to enforce the law. Once a crime has been committed, then they step in. Prior to that, you, they, they have no purpose. Prior, prior to a crime being committed, they have no function. You, if you haven't committed a crime, then a cop has no reason to be dealing with you at all. In order for a cop to prevent crime, there would have to be a, a cop stationed at every house in the country, and every business, and every institution, and that's just not feasible. That's, that's where people come in. Citizens stop crime. Cops enforce law. Well, yeah, it would, but the, you're talking about an, an amazing coincidence, uh, McGavin. Um, the cop would have to be right there at the time that the crime was being committed. That, that, that's, that's a very exceptional situation. That's, that's not run-of-the-mill, everyday kind of thing. I agree that um, recently the um, authority that they have has grown to dangerous levels. But the cops themselves aren't the problem with that. Um, you gotta take it a step further. It's not the cops that are the issue, it's the people telling the cops what to do are, are the issue. You can't blame the cops for that. Um, they, they get asked to do a lot of things that they don't like to do as well. Um, 
but they have families to take care of. They have children to feed. Um, so you're asking them to um, sacrifice that. No, you know what caused that, uh, Venom? That was us not doing our job. Same, same deal with the police department. It's us not doing our job. It's easy to shift the blame onto somebody else. Uh, it's really hard to take responsibility for things. We're responsible for the, the, the health and well-being of this country. Not the police. Not the government. We are. We're the ones who appoint these people. We, we're the ones who vote for these people. And if, the, if they fail, it's because we put them there and gave them the opportunity to fail. Um, that, that, that's, a, that's a juvenile approach to a situation. We live in a uh, democratic republic. We vote for the people in power. If those people are in power, uh, if those people that we vote into power are corrupt, that's because that's our fault because we put them there. And it's our responsibility to get rid of them. We failed in that. We've been failing in that for years. And, and look what the, the average cop has to deal with on a daily basis. They deal with the dregs of society on a daily basis. The lowest of the low. Every day, all day, every day, for 12 hours a day. That's not to say that there aren't crooked cops. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying on, on, the, on the whole, most of them are decent folks just trying to do their job. No, nobody's forcing them to do that. They've chosen to do that. So what's your alternative? What, what, what's your solution? How, how would you fix it? What would you put into place? It's easy to rail against injustice, but I don't hear solutions. Name a better alternative. That's fine. Bail all, ban all government sanctioned violence. Um, okay. That doesn't cover the fact that um, you know, the guy down the street is going to break into your home and steal your stuff. That doesn't cover the fact that somebody is going to commit a crime. What happens when those people commit a crime and there's nobody there to deal with it? I mean, that's not a solution to the problem. The government doesn't force people to break into people's homes. The government doesn't force people to commit rape and murder. Those are people making choices. So where do we go when those people do those things? Who do you turn to if we get rid of all law enforcement? There needs to be a, an agency in place to um, deal with those issues when they arise. Uh, go ahead, McGavin. <laughs> this is the place for it. Feel free to say whatever you want. That's not the answer. That's not the answer, and I'll tell you why. People always mistake the possession of firearms to be for protection against criminals. The possession of firearms in the United States is not to protect yourself from criminals, it's to protect yourself from the government. Period. Protecting yourself from criminals is just a, a bonus, it's just a side effect. If you have no means of keeping your government in check, then your government will run roughshod over you, as they have through time immemorial. The only time a government's ever been kept in check is when the people can do something about it. That, that get rid of guns argument always gets misplaced. It always gets put on personal protection against criminals. It doesn't, and that's not where it belongs. That's not why it was written into the Constitution. It was written into the Constitution to protect you from your government. Guns keep martial law at bay, exactly. Um, guns are the final check in our system of checks and balances. Yeah. That's why the Second Amendment was put in. Because when all else fails, when they take away your free speech, when they take away your freedom to travel, when you take away all those freedoms, they're not freedoms, they're liberties. Okay. Um, that's the one you use to get them back. That's... When all the laws have failed, when all the politicians have failed, when the corruption has gotten to that point, that's when you take it back, and you take it back by force. Again, that's not me calling people to go to war with the government. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying that's the way it was written. That's why it was written that way. Because look at what we had just finished doing. We just had finished taking our country by force from the British because we had run out of options. 
They wouldn't listen to us. They wouldn't work with us. They became tyrannical. And once they became tyrannical, we fought back. And then with that mindset in place, they wrote the Constitution and they included the Second Amendment in there for that very reason. It has nothing to do with protecting you from criminals. Nothing whatsoever. That's just a perk. Mm -hmm.